Well, to be fair, we didn't spot them. We spotted a vehicle under which we saw some lions. So, yes, here we have two young males and a female. They're lying in the grass. One of them, well, two of them in the grass deeply because it is windy and I must say it's the weather is pretty unpleasant out here at the moment. There's a cold wind and not much sun and the animals are all hiding from it as these ones are in the grass and then there's the other one sitting on the termite mound uh, opposite the wind so he's trying to hide away from the wind on that side of the termite mound but like our cheetah sisters did the other night they tucked themselves in behind the wind for the whole night and they were perfectly sheltered and comfortable where they were so that's what's happening here. It doesn't look to me like they're about to get up and hunt anything. Does it look like that to you, David? And that's because there isn't anything around. There are a few zebra uh, just behind where we are now. But other than that, everything here is very quiet indeed. And very peaceful. I'm just scanning the plains beyond. And there is not in them. So these lions, their boon time is coming to a close now. Now, I mean, the, the, the like I said, the wildebeest could come back. There's no reason they shouldn't. We're not late in the season yet. But if they don't, suddenly now the life of these lions is going to become that much more difficult. They're going to have to make a real effort to hunt. In the same way that the lions at Juma do, I don't think that they have to try any harder than that. But what has been a completely bonus-filled time for them could is now drawing to a close, and that means they're going to have to work a lot harder. And that's possibly why they're looking a little depressed. Don't you think, David? Having to work hard can drive a lion to depression. They're not, uh, they're not big on workaholics. And Anna Marie, you want to know if this is the sausage pride? No, it's not. It's uh, most certainly not. It's two young males and a female. I suspect they are from the Egyptian goose pride. We're very close to them, uh, to their little pan. And so I think that they're probably elements of the Egyptian goose pride, the rest of which could be around here somewhere. We were on our way to the salt lick to see if we couldn't find that pride and just see what was going on there, see if there were any animals around that way when we spotted this vehicle off the road. And now we have these lions. But they're definitely not members of the salt lick pride. Stephanie, you make a very good point there. You say, do the termites on the termite mound not bother the lions at all? Uh, no, they don't. They don't crawl out and bite them unless they happen to be over an opening, in which case they would. But they don't. Termites, very unlike sort of defensive ants, will not come out of their nests or mounds and swarm over something and start biting or spitting formic, formic acid at them. They very much don't do that. They'll, as long as the sort of lion is peaceably lying there, they'll be absolutely fine. And I mean, I have many times sat on a termite mound with, that is ac relatively active, and the termites could easily have come and bited me on my bottom, but they didn't. They're relatively peaceful. Uh, Cockroach-like insects are termites. They're not violent like some of the ant species we have. James, you're wondering if, if it started to rain or storm, would they try and find some cover? Uh, James, yes, I think they would. They would go and find a tree to lie underneath. They might go and find a bush to lie underneath. But, you know, it's, it's funny. We as human beings, of course, one of our sole desires in life is to stay warm and in shelter. And it's, of course, because we are not covered in a, a great deal of fur. Well, some of us are covered in a bit more fur than others, but nothing like a lion has. And these animals kind of just accept it. They're not used to being dry and warm and in a consistent indoor temperature and so they're just used to it and in much the same way that people who grew up without uh, not without shelter necessarily but in in areas that uh, where there are extremes of climate and they don't have the luxuries of insulation and air conditioning etc 
people who've grown up like that have a lot of much higher tolerance for being wet or being cold or being hot and I think it's the same for these animals I just think they have a much higher tolerance than we do and so when we see them out in the rain when they look bedraggled and miserable oh I'm sure they don't feel quite as good as they do after a hearty meal on a warm morning but I don't think you know it's just something they accept they don't think gee I have to get dry because they know they can't and they never have been that makes sense so I mean a, a pet for example the dog that lives outside uh, will just sit in the rain if it doesn't know that it can come in hmm now Debbie this is an interesting one you say would lions stray into another lion pride's territory what you've seen my dear Topi coming straight towards us just behind, the pole. just behind the pole sorry it's coming this way though I don't want to move it's just behind the bush let's see what she does here if we get a hunt now I will be absolutely astounded they're coming straight here go live go live <laughs> coming straight past us here lions up sit down the male is going to make a complete mess of this as always he's a total imbecile Just waiting, everybody. I'm, they're coming, just jogging past, and I don't think that there's going to be a hunt here. No, there might. No, no, there isn't. <laughs> the Topi have seen the lions now, <laughs> and the male. It, it, they are. There is nothing more useless than a young male lion. They're clueless, they bungle about, they don't know how to hunt, they ruin all the hunts, they just irritate all the females in the pride. Obviously when they're big males then they know what's it, what they're about, but they're at that kind of awkward teenager phase where they, they just don't know what they're doing. Oh, that's hilarious. The topia watching, the lioness has just thought, you know, I'm just wasting my time here. Absolutely no point in my doing anything with these two lumps around me. One of them hasn't even bothered to get off the termite mount. The topia watching. Topia, of course, much too fast for these lions at this distance. could have been very exciting but for the male I think she would almost certainly have tried to have a go in the absence of the idiot standing up right in front of him <clears throat> yeah Jacqueline I think it's a very good point why would the female be so far away from her pride Jacqueline it it's most likely that they're part of the same pride they could even be part of the same litter you know these could be her brothers and she has just picked up on how to hunt a lot more quickly than her siblings have and that does happen I mean the males take a long time to learn to hunt and it's only through necessity you now when they are kicked out of the pride that they truly learn to be effective hunters Toby still relatively close by and the lions are still watching I just want to quickly go through Debbie's question about whether lions will go out of their territories in order to hunt Debbie the answer is really not not no if they're desperate they will yes these males will become nomadic fairly soon in which case they will by default be in other lions territories but lions territories are defined by the amount of prey that there is in an area and so the size of a lions territory really is uh, you know is almost solely 
described by the distribution of prey. So the more sparse the prey is, the bigger the, the territory is, and so there's no need for lions to stray out of their territories in order to catch food. There's no point in having a territory if there is no food. Alrighty, I'm going to sit here and see how this unfolds. I don't.